Orcs are one of my favorite creatures in any fantasy setting. They have become such a big part of so many different universes. So today I'm talking to Mike Merles about the Orcs' place in the D&D multiverse. Orcs in D&D have for a very long time occupied the sort of generic bad guy slot. Uh, they've undergone a real change visually over the years. Uh, they started out as like these pig-faced guys. The, uh, and then they kind of in third edition morphed into almost like these like simian looking guys. They had like some gorilla like elements added to their visual look. And uh, we've kind of kept that. I mean, essentially we've, we, you know, in place, like we wanted to get across the idea that these guys are big and strong and brutish and very much have a hierarchy based on strength. You know, like orcs, you know, it's the, the classic idea of, you know, the 800 pound gorilla, right? That runs things like, okay, that's orc society, right? The orcs are the strongest rule. And if you want to prove you're the strongest, beat up the guy who's ruling and now you get to rule. Um, so it's very much a culture founded on strength, and it's a culture that's built in the image of Groomsh, the deity who created the orcs. Um, we don't, um, and I'm, I'm sure we have a story for it, but it's not coming to mind, of a story of like how Groomsh created the orcs. Um, but we do know that they were essentially created in, um, to mimic his, him in the sense of like, to Groomsh, strength is everything. The strong should rule. Um, and he is incredibly powerful. Uh, he fought Corlon and almost killed him. Uh, you know, he was the first thing that Corlon was ever afraid of, was Groomsh, uh, his just raw fury and, and power. Uh, now, Groomsh's drawback is he's not very clever. Uh, he can be, I mean, he's not dumb, but he's not the most creative deity. Uh, he's not the most, uh, you know, he's not really clever. Um, but that's really where Luthic comes in, where in a lot of ways, I think of Luthic as being the real power because the real strength of the orcs, the orcs would tell you that their strength is that they're strong. They can bash down everything. But when you look at the sort of history of the orcs, they really have had trouble creating empires. Uh, they're the many arrows orcs in the spine of the world mountains on the Sword Coast, and they've had some success. But in a lot of ways, they had to go against what they traditionally, how they would have acted, just as pure raiders and marauders. Uh, they kind of had to, King Obold had to sort of make changes in how the orcs were approaching things. And that was not necessarily a change that was gonna take forever. Um, because you know, you have your traditionalists, like, we should be just strong and just beat everyone up rather than try to operate as like a, a, a kingdom as a like, elves or humans would understand it. Um, and so their real strength isn't necessarily just their brute strength because they keep, they like to pick fights and they keep picking fights until they lose. You know, they are the guy who picks, fight, and wins, picks, fight, and wins, and doesn't have a, an end state other than I've beaten everyone, which means invariably they, they pick the wrong fight and lose. And that's really where the true strength of the orcs comes in with Luthic, where she's the mother of the orcs, and she is the one who helps guide them to recover. So I would say that the story of orcs in D&D is the orcs would tell you it's our strength. We're the strongest, we wield the biggest axes, the biggest swords, the biggest hammers, and we fight and we overcome. But I think when you actually look at them, it's their resilience, that they have made untold enemies across the years, and they keep coming back. And I think that's really a testament to the power of Luthic and the teachings that she imparts to her followers amongst the orcs. You know, I think of an, uh, of an orc clan or a tribe or whatever they call themselves, that there's like the warriors who go off, the impetuous young warriors who go running off uh, to raid and maraud and get themselves killed eventually. Then there are the wiser orcs who maybe survive a few raids and actually understand how the world works. And they're the ones who are ensuring that the orc clan actually survives for the next generation and then and, and holds on. That maybe when the, the elven kingdom is getting very aggressive and hunting down the orcs, that's when we stop sending out raiding parties. So we send out a raiding party kind of knowing they're never coming back. So let's make sure that all the impetuous hotheads go out on that raiding party and that they don't really have a way for the elves to track them back to our home. So you know, we will endure. Um, and so that's kind of what I think the interesting thing to me about orcs is, is that they have on one hand how they understand themselves. And then on the other hand, when you think of them cosmically and the actual hierarchy of their gods and their, their traits, it's two different things. And I always find that very interesting to think of. There's this myth that uh, part of the reason the orcs have this, this anger, this, this aggression, is that the, the other gods try to trick Grimsh. They thought, well, if we all claim parts of the world uh, and we, all, we claim everything, we leave nothing for Grimsh, there'll be no space for him. We don't have to worry about him anymore. 
And when Groop sees this, he pulls out his spear and he gouges uh, through the forest with it and says, well, you know, the elves have claimed the forest, well, I claim this portion of the forest. The dwarves have claimed the mountains and he stabs into the mountains with a spear and says, this is what I claim for my people. You know, we're gonna, we will fight for it and we'll take what's owed to us. And it's really that, you know, sort of cosmic event that still echoes down to today in how the orcs in a lot of ways view the world. Um, you know, that idea that it's us versus them and it's our strength will carry us but at the same time, we will endure whatever the world throws at us, we keep getting back up again. Uh, Luthic is traditionally depicted as Grimsch's wife, his consort. And she is in charge of um, childbearing, motherhood within the orcs, um, the young. Uh, usually in an orc clan, the uh, orogs will serve the priestesses of Luthic. Usually it's priestesses, but it's not, not like it's not locked into place. It's more just the typical thing. The, uh, and the orogs are stronger but smarter and smarter orcs. Uh, and they kind of serve as almost that last line of defense. You know, th they protect the young. And in, in, I've always felt with Luthic, there's a, there is a streak of violence that you find with Grimsch. She has these enormously long talons, you just to, to claw through the ground to create you know, the, the caves that the orcs live in, but also to claw her enemies. Um, but I also think it, it's really, it's, it's an anger and a violence that's, that's propelled by her fundamentally nature, her fundamental nature, the way she wishes to protect. Groomsh and Bagtru and Ilnaval, the other orc deities, they're aggressive in the idea we want to prove we're stronger, we want to conquer. Luthic is strong and powerful and aggressive in order to protect. She really is the one element that keeps orc society together, that stops it from just devolving into pure chaos or just constant infighting. Uh, they're kind of basically the keepers of what order there exists in a chaotic society. The, um, we know cosmically that uh, Maglubiot is trying to conquer the Orc Pantheon, and I think in a lot of ways, the, what would have been the deities of goblins and bugbears that were defeated by, by, by Maglubiot, the Orcs probably would have suffered the same fate if it wasn't for Luthic. That that's the difference between why did the Orcs, why did the Orc Pantheon survive, where the, hobgo well, the goblin or hobgoblin pantheon fell, I think Luthic is the answer to that. That that streak of protection, you know, the aggression, but it is alloyed with this idea of protection and a very strong maternal instinct uh, is what has preserved them. Thank you, Mike Merles, for being on D&D Beyond. This is a show entirely about D&D, about the lore, tips and tricks for playing D&D, and a whole lot more. I'm Todd Kenrick. Thank you for watching.